Hi everybody and welcome to Field One. I'm Keith. And I'm Ian. And today we're talking all about conservatory roofing. Okay, so let's get started. Um, we, we have done one of these Q&As before and customers found them really, really useful. Um, we're posting it on YouTube and on our website so that you can take a look. Um, but today we're talking all about the Lecker Conservatory Roofing System. It's a lightweight conservatory system um, used for insulating and soundproofing existing conservatory roofs. Um, we've got Erica with us here today and she's going to be asking us some of the, the most asked questions that we've had in the last sort of six to 12 months from customers. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna talk all about roofing. So Erica, what have you got for us first? Okay, so some of the most common questions that we get asked um, are, will replacing my conservatory roof with a lightweight tiled roof make my room dark? Okay, so Ian, do you wanna handle that one? So, um, possibly slightly. Is the answer to that question? If we're, if we're being slightly, if we're being honest, um, not as bad as some people may think. By the time a lot of sort of conservatories are plastered and skimmed and uh, and they uh, and then they're painted white, that the actual light reflection from the white is actually very, you know, sort of light bounces around the room and um, gives you that impression that you know it's still quite a light room, um, and that's based off feedback from customers we've done roofs for already. Um, they don't really struggle with it at all. Uh, and obviously we're talking about conservatory, so they have a lot of glass area in the frames themselves. So that's where the main amount of light comes into the room. So it's not really a, as big a sort of issue. It's kind of a lot of people really worry about sometimes. But we, have, we, we always have options for little glass units to go in, veluxes, um, fixed glass panels in the roof. So there are always those options with these roofs as well to sort of ha create a happy medium. Um, but other than that, no, I can't say that it's a huge issue in the end when customers have had this done. I think the sort of trade-off in the end you always need to kind of think about is sacrificing a little bit of light for the sake of having a room that you can use all year round. You know, you've got a polycarbon or a glass conservatory. Um, no way, even with advances in glass technology to this day, are you ever going to get a room which is going to hold the heat um, all year round. So you're only ever going to use it for six months of the year when the temperature's kind of, you know, mid-range, you know, too hot in the summer and uh, too cold in the winter and you're firing a load of heat into there to keep it up to temperature, which obviously we know nowadays with energy bills being what they are, are um, becoming an even bigger problem. So 150 mil of insulation in one of these, hold the heat in, reflects the sunlight, noise reduction as well on the top. So it, it ticks all those boxes in terms of the longevity of, of, of what, you're, what you're trying to get out of it. I think you hit the nail on the head there is that you've got to compromise. So, you know, yes, if you're worried about light being lost, maybe you've got a dining room that backs onto the conservatory and you're concerned about that, that light loss. And the, the rule of thumb generally is, is that light in the conservatory comes in through the conservatory frames and the heat in the summer comes through the roof and the heat in the winter is lost through the roof. And the frames themselves, that's where your light's coming from. It's still gonna be the lightest room in the house. Um, and uh, the, like Ian says, that the feedback that we've had overwhelmingly has been that they wish they hadn't worried so much about the light loss with these roofs. The benefits far outweigh um, any, any sort of dampening of light that you might experience, which we've found to be minimal. How long does it take to replace? So to install one of these roofs, um, a small conservatory, maybe a three by three, um, you're looking at a couple of days easily. Um, if it's a bigger conservatory, I mean, a long installation is normally about a week, so four, five, maybe a sixth day, um, depending on how big the conservatory is. But a normal average size conservatory, two days to three days maximum. Do town conservatory roof changes need building regulations? The simplest answer to that is yes, they do. Um, basically, if you, in this country to this day, if you build a glass or a polycarbonate conservatory, then you can do that without building regs, um, as long as you stick to certain per, uh, permitted development rules. Um, but that is classed as the full roof area is 100% glazed. 
And so obviously when you're doing a, an insulated lightweight tiled roof, you're taking away all the glazing area. So you've got a solid roof, which then deems it not to be um, a glazed structure. So yes, you should have building regs to go with your uh, roof change. Um, a lot of people in the industry, especially your one-man bands, might say, well, no, you haven't. Um, but to be honest with you, um, that's more down to the fact that they don't want to get involved in it. And it's easy just to say no and, and sort of cut themselves out a bit of red tape. So, but the honest answer is yes, they definitely should have building regs um, and feel will provide them as standard with every single order. Um, it, it, it depends on the local authority though, right? And we're in Staffordshire. So mm. I believe that our local authority website actually references this area. So if you type in a solid conservatory roof into the planning portal, um, or, to, or a tile conservatory roof, and you, you'll find information on there um, on Staffordshire Council's website. Um, and it will actually say about building regulations, but it won't actually say whether they are or are not required, which is why people think it's a bit of a grey area. But what they do do is they say, you have to conform to the local authority building controls website. And you link through to that, which is a, a national website, which is set up to cover the, the entire, entire country. And in that website, they are very, very, in their documentation, they are very, very specific that you are changing the thermal properties of an existing building um, or you're building a, effectively a, a, a highly glazed extension. Um, in which case, the thermal properties of that roof need to be properly assessed by a building controls officer. We need to make sure that you're getting the right insulation um, and we need to make sure that obviously things like fire regulations have been adhered to as well. So absolutely, um, you know, you, if you when in doubt, um, err on the side of caution, um, and obviously it's, a, it's our policy at Field Warm uh, that you, you do require building regulations for a solid roof conversion. Absolutely, so I think in the end as well, the and building regulations rules have changed quite recently um, for the roofs used to have to achieve a U value of 0 0.18, um, which for that has now changed to 0.15. What's U value? What's U value? So U value is basically the thermal efficiency of the building. Um, how how it holds the heat that is put into it. So obviously, you know, insulation is what holds it in and all that kind of stuff. So it basically what how how long it keeps it within the building and keeps its thermal thermal um, sort of conditions and, and keeping the room at that kind of temperature without piling all the heat into it. Obviously, you know, again, things aren't getting any better with the energy and bills and you know. So the lower the number, the better the roof is at keeping the heat in. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. This this roof is actually can go down as 0 0.12, right. wow. which the government's are plan at the moment to take that down to 0 0.12 as of 2025. Um, a lot of other roof systems out there have really, really had to battle with their systems because they initially set up the 0 0.18. Now they've gone, they've, they've sort of battled to get it to 0 0.15 and they're gonna have further battles still to get it to 0 0.12. Mm. This is already set up for it, it's future-proofed. So it's already there, it's already in place. We all know what we're doing with it. While the other companies struggle, we're already there with it. So um, yeah, and it's becoming a very much more increasingly thing to, you know, this is, this, to this is our Lecker roofing system that we, we, we've got in front of us here. It's a cross section of the of the roof. Um, I think we'll probably talk about that a little bit more um, shortly. Um, but if we go to Eric now for our next question, we'll see where we go from there. Sure. Can I have a log burning stove installed? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're not talking about polycarbonate plastic roof. Um, so we haven't got to worry um, about the, 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 the heat from that perspective. It is a solid roof. You've got multiple layers of insulation, water protection and flashing. So absolutely, you can, you can put a log burner in this. Um, we've done so on several occasions in the past, in fact, yeah. um, and worked with uh, third party log burner installation companies um, to, uh, to get those installed. Um, the main thing that you need to absolutely uh, ensure happens is that when you're getting a quote for your log burner to be installed, uh, that you are getting a twin wall pipe being installed uh, that goes through the roofing cavity. Basically, it's what it sounds like on the tin, you've got an outer skin of the pipe and an inner skin of the pipe so that the heat doesn't radiate out to that outer skin um, and that can go straight up through the roof section. Uh, in between the rafters and then gets flashed on the top to make sure it's completely weatherproof. So uh, absolutely no problem at all. Um, although if you've got a log burner in your conservatory with one of our roofs on, you're going to get very warm. Absolutely. And if you, we work with whoever you choose to do your log burner install and, um, you know, and on design, we can make sure obviously, you know, that the space in the rafters is the right place. So, you know, you have a dedicated surveyor who deals with that. 
and uh, sets it out to make sure it's set in place. And then we'll deal with that all the way through to fitting where, you know, we'll even fit the cowl in the top of the roof that takes the pipe through, just ready for the for, for the for the band of, uh, sorry, your log burner installed to cover it, just cut the hole, put the pipe through, away you go. Simply done. What is the lacquer system that we use to replace your existing conservatory roof with? Okay, so uh, the lacquer roofing system is a full replacement conservatory uh, lightweight insulated roofing system. We've got a sample of the roof here, which is a cross section um, of the roof. Uh, if you can imagine that, um, stand out up there, sloping up towards the house. This is the edge of your conservatory here. Your windows and the conservatory sit here. Um, so it's a lightweight and, and more importantly, it's, a, it's, it's something called a GRP system made of glass reinforced plastic. It's highly insulated uh, and it's a, it's a true warm roof system as opposed to what they call a cold deck system. Can you tell us a little bit about the construction of the Lekker roof system? Okay, yeah, absolutely no problem. So as Keith mentioned before, um, it's made out of material called GRP, glass reinforced plastic. Um, it's a lot better um, in its fact that it, it doesn't uh, conduct uh, cold like aluminium does and it hasn't got the weight of timber so it can absorb water. This doesn't absorb any water and it's strong as steel. Um, so it's an absolutely fit material. You might not hear a lot in any other way, you won't hear it at all in any other system. Um, but it's an absolutely great material to use uh, for this application. Um, so just to sort of like look at this roof cross section here, we've got, um, so as Keith said before, your frame sits here, and this is the this is the ring beam, sort of what we call it, or the ease beam that goes around and sits on your frame perimeter. Uh, that's got its own face to take the fascia here, uh, a little soffit trim on the underside where you just have that little gap, and this, that'll take your uh, gutter and uh, gutter brackets. Um, so I'll just give this a little turn here. You can see the uh, the rafter itself here. Uh, so again, glass uh, reinforced plastic rafter. Um, we've got two different types of insulation that we put between the rafters. Now this is going back to the uh, the building regulation side of things. So the this grey one here is uh, EPS insulation. Now that is what they used to use for 0.18. Um, it's still around. We still keep it. It's not a problem. Um, so, because sometimes you might have buildings, you know, we, we do sort of freestanding garden buildings, uh, which if customers didn't want sort of want that full, you know, 0.15 uh, value, well, you can get the same of it on getting down to a 0.18, it's still fit for purpose, absolutely fine. The amount of 0.18 tile conservatives that are out there that are still functioning are fine, are uh, still absolutely fine. Um, but now with the new updated building regs, this is the uh, PIR insulation, which you, you have to put in the rafters, which gives you a 0.15, it's a lot denser. Um, it's 130 mil there, uh, which does the lion's share of the uh, insulation side of things to protect it. Uh, the, obviously, this is 130 mil as well, which is just a little bit thinner, a little bit denser, uh, you know, not as dense, sorry. Um, so, um, also, and this is quite a big one for me, no other system on the market does this, so that, you know, the aluminium systems don't do this. You have an insulation layer in between, uh, in the, inside the rafter itself. Now, if you can imagine with a lot of the aluminium systems, they actually have rafters that are smaller with 100 mil insulation in between them now when the building regs got updated today they've had to put a lot more insulation and again it was about 100 and uh it was about 150 altogether and now it's up to about 165 so what they used to have to do is get that they did it anyway they had an insulated plasterboard on the bottom of here so that was a 50 mil insulated plasterboard so 62 mil altogether um but now they've had to pull that to about 72 mil board 72 and a half so um, that's quite deep, isn't it? And yeah. so if I'm looking at this part here and, and this is sitting on top of my internal conservatory frames, putting a big insulated board on the bottom of that rafter, doesn't that interfere with the glass on your conservatory frames? Absolutely. So the only way that was ever around that was to basically put a great big timber packer on top of your frame before that ring beam goes on. So to get the plasterboard line to come, to drop down and get in line, so it stays above your glass line. Um, again, and, we and we don't want timber, right? No, we don't want timber. We don't, we, we don't want anything that's going to um, uh, sort of break down over time. You know, the, we want these to last forever. Um, so, and that's why it's totally worth it. I'd imagine time. particularly on the ring beam area here and the structure that goes around top of the conservatory frames. Yeah. That's the last place we want to put timber, right? Absolutely not. So again, like we, uh, and we'll go into timber a bit more later, but. When you're putting timber onto UPVC, it's it's not the greatest thing in the world because you, you get two different you know two different materials that expand and contract at different rates, so it causes movements, possibly cracking of your frame welds, 
um, a crack in your plasterboard, things like that. Um, and again, I mean, you imagine you've got your frame already and then you're raising your roof like that and, you know, you're praying a lot more rocking on your on your frame and things like that because you're trying to push it up with a big beam. Um, and when the regulations go up again in 2025, you know, there's already about a 3x2, possibly a 4x2 pack now they have to put on the frame. That's going to end up having to be a lot more because so these other systems, the only way they can go without changing their rafters and the way they extrude them, which will cost them too much money, the only way they can go is to beef up the internal plasterboard. Right. Um, so that means they've got to put an even bigger timber packer on the frame to get around it. And for customers who, who have that timber packer on there, uh, let's just, you know, uh, for, for argument's sake, say that water started leaking behind the fascia for whatever reason, mm. or moisture from condensation got into that timber packer, and it rotted that packer beam that's sitting all the way underneath the roof. Yeah. What are your options? What What are you going to do? Let's say we're, let's say we're seven eight years down the line, and and you've got a rotting ring beam. What, what how would they how would they deal with that? Not without going through a huge amount of work to I would say pull the whole thing down and replace the, the complete beam. roof. Take it all down. It's, so it's all going to come down. It's all going to come down. It's a it, the beam that you put on there is a structural one. It's holding the ring beam up, which is obviously structural as well. So it's holding the building up. You know, it's, it's, you know, there are possibilities of maybe packing the roof up and removing a side at a time. Well, again, that's going to crack plaster, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's something that you, you don't want to go down that it's line. It's a labour intensive operation. Absolutely. Well. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of messing around with, uh, with labour and all that. So you've you got a lot of labour. So we, we don't have to worry about any of that for the ecosystem? Not with this, no. The plan for this in the end, um, like I say, it's already uh, it's already 0 0.15 as it is with a normal plasterboard on here. It goes directly onto this uh, on, onto the rafter, and um, so that just sit and that, that that little gap there just finishes the plasterboard just on your frame line already. So no need for any packer um, at all on that for 0 0.15. Um, so sort of moving back to that point about these companies and, and sort of like having that insulated board on the bottom. They've got insulation between the rafters, yeah, so okay, that, that complies with, um, with the brakes and all that. But it's a lot shallower than, than the lacquer, right? Absolutely, it's already 100 mil. So, but what do you do here when you've got your insulation running, uh, when you've got your, your, your heat running through that rafter that goes up through there? There's a gap where everything your rafter is. You've got your 50 mil board on your insulation board on the inside. Well, this gap here, there's, 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 there's heat going to be lost through here. You know, it's it's uh, you know it's, it's one of the things that I'm you know a bit proud. Of. You know, I don't know how it's even got around these companies and how they even get away with it. It's sort of like you know it's a bit of a cheat if you ask me. But I think on the lecker, that's why that insulation in there is so important. Um, it, it creates that absolute warm roof kind of layer. The, the it, warm roof is classed as the, the insulation being continuous throughout. With this, with that sort of moulding into that and with that in the centre, that creates it as one continuous um, structure. So, and then to cap all that off. You'll see this board with this um, purple infill on the top. Um, it's a um, this is this is not just sort of like you know, people in the industry liken it to a bit of a, a window board panel, but it's definitely not that. And this has been specially um, designed by Lecker. Um, all the boffings there, sort of like doing all the intelligent work and all the calcs and everything, all the paperwork to go with it. This is a structural board. So normally on top of roofs, you get an OSB board, timber, you know, or um, uh, OSB or. Uh, um, a marine plant, a marine plant, plant like that. that kind of material on top. So again, timber, it can absorb water. If it can absorb water, it can rot, deteriorate. Down the line, you've got damp problems, especially on there, because normally your tile's fixed to it. So as soon as that starts to deteriorate, wind's coming through, your screws are pulling out, um, and it, it, it starts to jeopardise the structure. And you know, more money for a customer to fork money out to get that to put that right. And, and I would imagine that because, um, and, and you know, with, with the timber boarded roofs at the top, because this 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 makes it a warm roof. Is that right? A technical warm Correct. roof. Yeah. Well, what's Correct. the difference between a, a technical a warm roof and a cold roof system? So a cold roof normally is the insulation is um, in between the rafters and, and underneath it. It's not. It's not kind of. Um, on top of it. It's on, yeah, yeah so whereas normally a warm roof system is on top. So you have got insulation on top, but the main feature with it is that it is continuous throughout the roof. Like I say, if you build a timber roof, drop the insulation in between, the insulation isn't continuous, it's been broken up by right. um, non insulation layers. So that's why this insulation layer is so important. That gives us a definition of a warm roof, as well as insulation on top, which is continuous throughout. And because the GRP the rafters and structure are non conductive, we're not breaking it all the way Absolutely. through. We've got that. Th We've got a, we've got a third. We, it's not being broken anywhere. It's a, it's a completely um, insulated, continuous insulated layer. Absolutely. All the way through. And, and people have sort of like more technical function might kind of say that um, well, there's no air gaps in this. It doesn't need them. 
aluminium roofs do, and so the timber roofs. Because they're cold roofs. Because systems. they're cold roofs, they need airflow throughout them um, to stop thermal bridging and things like that, um, and uh, cold spots. Because GRP doesn't conduct the cold, it doesn't need the air gaps, okay? Okay, so if we've got a timber board on top, like in, in, in other systems, and it's a cold roof system, it means it has to be ventilated underneath the tile. Yeah. Is that right? So it's got yeah. airflow. Yeah. And with airflow, obviously it comes cold and hot air meeting underneath those tiles. That's where your condensation problem is, right? Absolutely, yeah. And obviously it's one of those things you're never going to see until it's too late, basically. Because yeah. it's already got down to the timber boards, it's yeah. eating through the membrane, Absolutely. from years of being damp and yeah. wet, drying out, getting wet, drying out, getting wet. Absolutely. And that timber board, it's going to rot, right? Absolutely. All timber, and I know that... Okay, they're treated, treated timbers used and all that kind of stuff. Treated or non-treated, you know, it, it still will absorb water. The treatment, the treatment will protect it for a certain amount of time, but in the end, the water will have its way and sort of do what it's got, you know, what water's always going to do, you can't stop it. And the ends of the boards have been cut, so they're not, they're going to allow the absolutely. condensation to penetrate and, yeah. and everything else. So yeah. And because you have to create the airflow, normally on top of these, you have to have the timber battens. So again, um, timber pattern, you know, been a lot that's it's been stored outside of the builder's merchant and all that has been, it's, it's seen rain, it's seen weather, yeah, it's frost. we've all seen that, wet timber sat on the yard. Absolutely, um, so, and they all come in. And again, moving back to the insulated plasterboard, they can't connect the plasterboard straight to the rafter. So guess what they have to use to line it with first? Timber. Timber. So, and again, it's supposed to be uh, dry timber, not always the case when we know from sort of like, you know, our experience around these things done in the past. Um, Wet timbers get delivered, um, and when questioned, it's a bit like, well, no, it'll be okay. Um, it's like, well, no, we don't agree with that, and that's why we've strived to eliminate, you know, find a system that's and really And we've made. seen that in the past with, with roofing systems that incorporate timber, particularly in the winter when installations are being done, and it's cold, and it's wet, and it's raining, materials are getting wet, um, and then that, 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 that water that gets trapped in that timber, after the installation's done, after the plastering's done, will seep out of those timbers whilst they start to dry, yeah. um, and you'll get those damp, damp patches on your plaster work, and they'll need retouching, they'll, they'll crack, they'll need yeah. dealing with it. It'll all just stay in their traps, and yeah. then eventually it'll start to seep its way out as things start to fail and uh, you know give you a problem down the line. Um, so yeah, um, so this is, again, this is a structural board and it's continuous insulation, so it's um, it has structural factors to it as well. It all gets fixed and pinned to the top of the rafters. Um, so again, that, that provides your final insulation layer to really give you your, your insulation uh, values, you know, and keep your values up and all that and get to where we need them to be. So let's talk about finishes then. External finish, what options have you got? So externally, um, we've got two kinds of tile. Um, obviously, the tiles that you install onto a, a conservatory warm roof have to be lightweight. We can't just go and install um, normal concrete tiles that you get on top of a house, for example. Uh, way too heavy. Um, so we, we've got two, two different kind of tile offerings. The tile that you can see on top of the sample unit here uh, is our slate tile. Now, we're partnered with Britmet. Um, who uh, manufacture um, this tile um, here in, in Britain. Um, it is a slate effect tile, so it's been moulded to look like a slate tile. Now they come in a, a number of different colours, and um, we've got seven different examples here. Um, I'll just sort of hold those up so that you can see those on the camera there. So you can see there's a huge variety of colours available from those tiles for us to hopefully try and match to your existing building. Maybe you don't want to match it to your existing building, maybe you want to make a feature of the roof, um, in which case you'll choose a brighter colour or whatever it might be that, that, that you want. Um, so that, that's our slate tile offering. Um, we've also got a stone shingle tile. Um, so these are basically steel backed tiles with a stone shingle adhered to the surface um, and covered in a, uh, a clear lacquer uh, to, to hold the, the, the grit in place. Um, so that, that's an alternative to the slate. And in terms of choice, it really just depends on, on what you want as the homeowner, what you've got on your current buildings or extensions or, or house roof, um, and, and what takes your fancy. But uh, yeah, we get a lot of customers um, who, who just like to start the conservatory around wherever it is they're changing to. Maybe they've changed their conservatory frames, they've gone with an anthracite grey, and they're more interested in a grey or a black tile. Um, or, or perhaps they've got red tiles on their existing property, and we, we've got tiles to match and to suit as needed. Yeah. Absolutely, any application, any function, yeah, just matter. We've got, you know, like I say, a lot, wide, wide variety of colours. Um, so um, that's the external finish. 
um, internal, um, like you kind of traditionally want to see really, which is, it has actually got it on this, uh, on this design, but um, plasterboard, I mentioned it a bit earlier, plasterboard fixes the inside of here, which creates you a skin to finish. Uh, and to be painted to whatever colour you want, which obviously, you know, customers predominantly go with white, which is nice because obviously, like, again, like we touched on earlier, that, that reflects the right, look, the lights really well um, to give you that, um, you know, sort of that, that bit of light you still want in the room, which I've always sort of found is enough. And, um, you know, and I, and I dare say, actually, you, um, Keith, with, you know, you, you've got, you, you've got old, an old polycarbonate roof and you had it changed to a absolutely solid, solid roof, roof. Uh, no glass panel for you or nothing like that you didn't want yeah. to you wanted to capitalize on the u values um so you absolutely you, you actually you, you always say to me about how much you use it now as a room and then does, uh, does the light bother you in any way it, it, it's it's game changing and and you, you you don't really appreciate how much of a difference it will actually make um obviously uh, there's a there's a cost attached to installing one of these and Trying to uh, justify that requires you, I guess, to have um, a, a level of expectation as to how good that room is going to be when the work is done. And, and I can quite honestly test, you know, testify um, to these roofs in that they are completely, utterly game changing. You will go from a room that is freezing cold in the winter, and we all know those rooms have to be shut off in the winter. The doors get closed, the internal properties, and you probably won't go out there for another two, three months until temperatures start to pick up. And in the winter and in the summer, you know, when you should be able to use that room, when you're having your barbecues and people around and you're entertaining, you're trying to enjoy your garden, um, you want to be able to sit in that room and you can't because it's absolutely boiling hot. You can't put a TV in there for fear of the TV melting and going wrong. Um, even silly things like, you know, um, candles on the side, you know, you'll walk in on a hot day and They'll be melted and folded over because it does get that hot in, in, in conservatories. Um, one of these roofs will completely change that situation. You will be able to walk from one room in your house into your new conservatory room and you won't feel a drop in temperature or a change in temperature at all. Um, and uh, it, it just really does what it says on the tip. Um, it's one of the very few products that come to market. Um, they're not gimmicky. It does exactly what it says it's going to do. It turns your conservatory into a room that you will use all year round, and it completely changes the way you use the space. Absolutely, and and, and not just obviously from yourself. That's a great endorsement, but we go back to customers to do more work from other things, and 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 we always ask the number one question: How are you getting on with your conservatory roof? We changed for you last year, and the answer for me has has only ever been amazing. We use it all year round now. It does exactly what you said it would. So, uh, you know, and, and you can't get any better than that. Really and we, we must have installed more than six, seven hundred roofs now. Easy, easy. Absolutely something, easy. Something last, in that sort of region. Over the last five or six years, yeah, definitely. We have had no complaints from any customers ever to say that it did not do what they expected it to do. In fact, it's been the opposite. Yeah. Uh, not a single customer in more than six, seven hundred installations. Not a single customer. Absolutely. We are asked what the difference is between an overclad and an underclad and our war room systems. And we've already mentioned about timber before, but why is it really that bad? It can't be that bad, surely. Shall I take this one on you? Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you love having this one. Um, you go ahead. Don't forget an overclad. <laughs> um, okay, so um, overclads and underclads. Oh, please. The amount of customers that we've had to go out to to correct work that's been done from overclad and underclad. Basically, what they do um, is they take the uh, polycarbonate or glass panels out. Sometimes they leave them in, um, which is doubly bad. Um, but regardless, all they're doing is they're putting structure above and below the existing conservatory frame. The conservatory frame was never designed to hold that kind of weight. Um, you're going to be putting timber, insulated plasterboards, additional insulation above the plasterboards potentially. You're going to be putting uh, timber on the top, tiles. They should at the very least be trying to reinforce it. Um, however, none of it is subject to building control. None of it is subject to um, uh, engineer calculations, structural engineer calculations. Um, it's an absolute money pit and uh, it's a risk. To, to you as a homeowner and to your family. Um, and the amount of roofs that we've had to go out to where customers have paid thousands of pounds to have these jobs done. 
Um, and all of a sudden, the roof moves, it shifts, the ridge shifts, plasterboard cracks, the water starts to penetrate, leaks into the electrics, it starts blowing the electrics in the house. Um, and where are these traders when your customer has those problems? Uh, I'll tell you where they are. They're either bumped or all of a sudden their mobile number doesn't work anymore. Um, do not get an overclad or an underclad. It is an absolute non-starter. Um, they do them because they are cheap. Um, and they say that they, it's exactly the same as a warm roof. And after the first day of the install, yeah, great, it's gonna look the same. It's gonna have tiles on the outside, it's gonna have plaster finish on the inside, um, and they can really make them look fantastic. But functionally, um, I guarantee you, um, within, um, I think the, the, the soonest we had one customer, uh, it was something along the lines of a year to two years, it started going wrong. Um, we had um, one guy, uh, the roof completely shifted, uh, we actually replaced it with a, a complete new warm roof uh, professional system for him um, and we had to take it down um, the water was leaking through the electrics, it was blowing his house out, the inside was absolutely dreadful, it damaged his floor and his internal walls um, and from the outside you could physically see the roof had skewed. Um, that was just one example, um, I've had another one where the customers had to get building control um, in to check for subsidence to rule that out um, and because their conservatory frames were leaning and moving and starting to break you could see the conservatory coming forward they hadn't been inside their conservatory for six months because they were that scared it was going to collapse and that was ultimately down to a timber roof that had been installed um, on top of the conservatory frames it hadn't been correctly designed it hadn't been correctly constructed um, and uh, and it was too heavy and of course it was collapsing the conservatory. And again, that was as a result of a full conservatory roof change uh, for a professional system. So yeah, don't don't get an overclass. Does that cover it? Does that a bit I of think, a, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's clear on that. Absolutely. I know, you know, it's, I, I basically, when I started in this industry 20 years ago, I was, um, I worked for my, uh, my dad manufacturing um, polycarbonate glass conservatories in a factory. Now the programs, the process, these um, conservatories are all, um, they, they do their own stress checks with it and they, they tell you which type of rafter to use based on how long it is, you know, and, and so it doesn't get any deflection rate, things like that, depending on the weight of the tonic. So, um, and, and those systems used to then give you your pass rate on your, on your, on your, on the, on the building itself. But don't forget that was done for build, holding polycarbonate and glass sheets. Uh, I presume they accounted for things like snow load, snow but load. only with those yeah. polycarb sheets and glass, right? Absolutely. So it's strictly based on the conditions for what it, it believes it's going to be in. So like I say, snow load, you know, foot of snow maybe, it calculates it to take that kind of weight. But no more. But no more than that. Because no. they're not going to make their, their system so expensive no. that it could hold three times, four times the weight it needs to. Absolutely. They're going to make it so that it only just is enough to get the best possible price for the customer, right? Absolutely, because that's what the value is about. Obviously, we've got to sort of consider value in these things, but not at the, the, the risk of sacrificing structural integrity. You can't do it. It's, it's you know, obviously it's unsafe for, for very obvious reasons, but um, so you think about that now when someone comes along and they are putting plasterboard on the inside, big timber sheets on top, which is probably heavier than the polycarbonate alone. And then, the, the, you know, the, they should technically line these rafters with timber, you know, to, to be able to screw the board down. And then you've got your your, your tiles and your, and your lap on top. No way, no, absolutely no way. Those, those, those insulated plasterboards as well, they're really heavy, aren't they? They are heavy, yeah. They are absolutely. really heavy. You can't say that sort of like popping a load of timbers around and putting some screws in it is, is, is good for structural integrity, because it's not. You know, what you find a lot with conservatories, especially long ones that, there's a, there's a product called tie bars that we use in conservatories um, quite a lot. You might find you got a polycarbonate one that didn't need a tie bar because the computer, when it was put in, it didn't spec for it. Now, if you put a, if, if a tile roof is about the same weight as a glass roof, then it might then say, well, you need a tie bar in it. But then people are lining these polycarbonate conservatories for the, with the weight and then they're not putting tie bars in. So what you find is your frames on the outside start to bend. So again, you're pushing it out. And, it's and, and, your and that's, that, that's caused from spread, right? So yeah. if we've got our conservatory roof structure like that, the more weight that goes on it, the more it wants to do this, right? Yeah, that's and because good. they're vaulted ceilings, they're going to need bracing up Absolutely. one way or another. Absolutely. So they, they sort of like, you know, the, 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 the people who normally do this don't have kind of like the technical capability to, to understand that, you know, as far as they're concerned, they're, they're chippies and they're just slinging some timber up and all that. They don't understand what they're actually, they think they're doing right, but I'm sorry, but 
I've been in this industry, like I said, for 20 years, and uh, I'm sorry, it's just not right. It's, it's and, and they even sacrifice on insulation, you know, they might only put 75 in between the Raptors with a 25 mil board. So even though you pay this money, and, and you know, let's not deny the fact that yes, it's going to be cheaper, but cheaper isn't always good, is it, at the end of the day, that you're still going to sacrifice and they're going to put half the insulation in, and you are still not going to get that room that you're going to use all year round. You know, it, it's just, it, it doesn't even come close. So it's, yeah, big no no. Again, it's what the tile roofs, when they're processed, they, Again, it's thrown through a computer that gives you all the structural calculations for the rafter weight you need, yeah. the tie bars, where you need them and how you need to utilise them. Uh, and you know, so it's built that specification, it throws that pass sheet up on the computer system to, to be building regulations compliant to. Don't get an overclass. <laughs> we've talked about overclads and underclads and we've touched on timber. Um, what's your take then on timber? So again, um, timber is a, um, Tim is a great material for certain applications, um, but when it comes to conservatories, um, again, um, a big no-no. I think in-house roofs, yes, absolutely. Again, we're talking about timber structures with, with, with trusses and all that kind of stuff and support, and they have a beam going across and diagonal timbers. The whole so, so we get this little triangle thing with, with, with house roofs, so you're up in your loft, yeah. you know, you, you're, you're dealing with a, 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 a timbered out floor, which, so you've got that perfect triangle, haven't you? Yeah. And then they're all strutted up. Yeah. But you don't have that with the conservatory, do you? No, so you do. It's not the same design. You do with vaulted ceiling. So what you then have to do is put all your weights, or, all your, or pick your timbers up, um, you know, to be quite deep timbers, which again, you know, timbers are dense material. Um, and it can, um, so, so it, needs to be, it needs to be quite a dense stuff to sort of take the weight and put the right amount of insulation in between the rafter again. So you, you've got to get, again, you know, 150 mil of insulation in between a rafter, you've got to get a give a big six, six by two timber beam to get in there. So that's really heavy. That, that's really heavy. You imagine a lot of them running through a roof and you can't have a certain amount of gaps because your plasterboard has to obviously not droop uh, dro 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 under its own pressure so you, you have to have them every like you know yeah spicy yeah, absolutely spicy 600 yeah. centers absolutely maximum so you know it's it's still a lot of timber that's got to go in um and as we know timber yes it's probably it's assessed for its weight based on sort of being um uh just just as it is on its own but as we know timber can absorb moisture exactly water. so over time timber these roofs will carry on absorbing water um you know so again if it rains during the installation it's going to get wet, it's going to get stuck in the system, it's going to absorb that water over time, and then over time it's going to start jeopardising your structure because it's starting to rot. Even though it's treated, treated timber will last only a certain amount of time. Think about your, your fence panels when you you have to apply creosote to them every year because you know that it wears off and then you have to do it again. So if you leave it the next year, they're all falling apart. Yeah. Same timber, that's timber. That's Same the boards on your house, if they're timber. They rot, they they rot, they rot. You're painting them every year. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's obvious what timber, you know, great material, easy to work with, easy to cut, but, and great for a lot of applications. But in terms of conservatives, you know, it's over. And, you know, and again, moving back to the uh, expansion and contraction rates of timber against what you're putting on to the UPVC frames, UPVC expands and contracts at different rates of timber, you'll get a lot of movement and a lot of cracking on your plaster. It's just not fit for purpose in that sense. So yeah, and then, and then going back to kind of like, um, you know, companies and what you've got to think about is why they spend so much money on research and development. To bring these products to market. Right? Absolutely, to bring them to market. So, so Lekka, you know, this wasn't, this isn't just something they've knocked together. This is something they put millions of pounds worth of research into. Absolutely. Design and development of the products. Absolutely. Their first, their, their initial plan was, we don't want timber, you know. To be fair, the Lekka system is actually designed by um, a man who'd been out and, and fitted conservatory roofs for years, you know, and, 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 and he's fitting tile conservatories and he's like, no, this, this isn't right, you know, and, and, and whatever's being said by these companies, it is not right. I want to go out, I want to create something which is fit for purpose and this is exactly what he's done. So, fantastic system. Again, I fit conservatives, I manufacture them, I've been in the game a long time. As soon as I walked through the door with this, it was a no-brainer. You know, this this came to the market a bit new and kind of, you know, back back uh, a bit back and, you know, we were kind of blown away from it. Yes, that, that sits to our ideals and what I want, because there's no other system out there on the market that hasn't got timber in it. It's all got timber in it. It's, all, it's either all timber, like aluminium that's timber lined, or it's 
um, fully timber systems, which you know again, and it, it, it's just not fit for purpose when when getting involved with UPVC. Um, so again, you know, why why do you think these companies do all this R and D and all this, spend all this money to eradicate it from systems as much as possible because it's not fit for purpose? It shouldn't be there. It's just because it's cheap and they try to they try to bring the price down with it. It's but it, it it's no good for a consumer. This is this is like a third generation generation system, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So you have the initial systems, which were you know your, your polycarbonate, your glass, and yeah. everything else, and then the initial warm roof systems, which were aluminium, um, but didn't need to take a lot of insulation because building rigs back then didn't require it. So then you had your second generations, which were based on the first, but they redesigned to be able to take more insulation, be easier to fit, quicker to fit. And then, but they still use timber, timber boards, timber fillings here and there to achieve what they need to achieve. And then along came the Lecker, a third, it's the latest iPhone, right? It, it, it's, the, it's the latest product on the market, the latest Absolutely. technology, materials and design. Absolutely. Again, you know, we all, we all, a uh, great, great example of, you know, the latest iPhone, you know, we go out and we get the updated technology because it's better, it, you know, it, it, it improves upon the, on the old in every way. So, you know, it's, um, so yeah, like you say, this is, looked at the other systems and the mistakes they've made so and then you and then they, they put this together they pushed it through um uh with all like you know LABC with the regulation firms and all that got it passed so it's, it, it's fully compliant fully building regulation compliant fully passed so it's absolutely fine um, in what it does it's and it actually good. exceeds the regulations today so you know absolutely. in in three four years time five six seven it's still going to be up to date on rates Absolutely. You know, even though it's not a problem for people who've had it installed and the regs change, that's not an issue. But the point is, is that wouldn't you be happier knowing that the roofing system that you've got is, is future proof, you know, for the next 10 years? Absolutely. Um, it's going to deliver on that performance that you need to deliver on. Um, and, and the idea being is that in 10 years' time, you know, you're not going to have any maintenance costs of the roof. You know, the boards aren't going to be rotting. Um, you're not going to need to strip the roof down and, 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 and do some work on it. Because there's nothing to rot. There's nothing to go wrong, right? Absolutely, no. There's nothing here that's going to rot. There's absolutely, you know, it's it's, it's there for, for for definitely our lifetimes, kind of. Yeah, so, it's you know, a lifetime product. Again, absolutely, yeah. you know, it's a lifetime product. And I think that's the important thing with customers with value for money because, you know, you can spend this money and 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 kind of you know, okay, you might get a cheaper product with timber. You know, it's not we're not going to sit there and deny that it, it is cheaper, but. Are oh, you then going to be there another five, six, seven, eight years, kind of thinking, all right, this is this Spending is all falling apart yeah. now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and again with the overclass, you know, not even touching on the fact that you know you, you you're sort of like screwing into these rafters and all that and all that kind of stuff. You know, and there's people who just do the underclass; they don't have anything done on the top. They just have the underclass; they have it insulated and plasterboarded. What happens when all the top caps start to fail? UPVC with uh, with rubber gaskets. Trust me, I've been in the trade a long time. They disintegrate along with silicons that are used. So what happens when all your plaster ceiling starts to get all wet inside? You know, it's it's a, it's a temporarily band-aid solution to get your room usable all year round. Why? You know, you've got to sort of like look at impact of money-wise and what you're getting. When you're going to get, do it proper the first time, you've never got to worry about it again. Future-proof, absolutely go the right way with it. You know, we can't sort of sing that praise enough. You know, it's um, it's really really important for people. You know. And if you've got one of these babies with, with, with building regulations as well, I mean, we've always touched on it now and again, it comes up with customers, you'll get the value back on your home down the line when you come to, when you come to um, sell your property, if that's what you, what you end up sort of doing. You're putting a, a highly glazed extension on the back of your home. Yeah. So the money you put into this, with inflation as well and all that over the year, you'll get a return on it, you know, it, it, and that's been proven too. It's no longer a temporary structure, it's is not it? A temporary it it's a structure. permanent habitable structure Absolutely. attached to the main property Absolutely. that can be used all year round. So, you know, I think I think figures are, um, have, been, have been put around. There's not been too much research done into it, um, but the research that has been done into it has indicated somewhere in the region, depending on the size of the conservatory, you know, five to 10% increase in the value of property with one of these on. Um, and what great curb appeal as well. Um, to be able to sell a property and say, you know, this is our, this is the the summer room or the sun room um, yeah. or our or our glazed. You know, it's an extension at the end of the day. It's what it functions as, um, and that is going to help you with your, the, the resale price on your property. So that money you're putting into it, you're going to get it back at some point. It's an investment more than it is um, a luxury. Absolutely, yeah, definitely an investment. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, fantastic. Okay, Erica, have we got any more questions? No, I haven't actually. Okay, well, that's, I think we've, we've covered that um, quite comprehensively. Um, if you have got um, any queries, then please get in touch with us. 
um, either comments where you're viewing this video, um, it's on YouTube, um, or feel free to uh, contact us um, online. Um, our website address is www.fieldwarm.co.uk. Uh, you can email us at contact at fieldwarm.co.uk or just give us a call if you'd like to have a chat uh, on 01785 503 603. Um, we're happy to uh, have a, a chat with you about your conservatory. Um, we can even come out and see you and do a demonstration. We can do a survey and arrange for your quotations really quickly. So um, if you're thinking about changing your conservatory roof uh, to regain that lost living space, um, to give you a room that you can use all year round, uh, then please get in touch. So we're here today to see a customer that we've completed a roof installation for recently. Come with me and we'll take a look at how the job turned out. Yeah, the previous conservatory roof was uh, glass. In the winter of January, February, I'd be sitting there with a hoodie on and a hat if it, it was that cold. I contacted Feel Warm. The estimate was very, very competitive compared with the other competitors. They told us what they were going to do, how it would work. They went on straight onto the job and they did exactly what they said. Thank you.